Hi Aries, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your April 2022 Is It In The Cards Love Tarot Reading. This is a love tarot reading for all Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Happy birthday to any of you who are celebrating if this is your sun sign. I also have an Aries sun and am feeling the energy, hoping you are too. And as usual, I send you love every day and that energy of love and attracting more love into your lives. And if you are new here, welcome to you. I post new readings on Friday, then again on Monday. Monday's readings are always a different style every week. So of course, today's reading will be a love reading, but next week it could be something and it will be something entirely different. Fridays are always a general reading. So if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus about love, please? What does Aries need to know about love? Messages for Aries about love, please. All right, so we'll draw three cards to represent your energy, three cards for the person you're attracting, three cards on the advice, and then we'll have the angel answers. All right, we've got the Eight of Cups the Queen of Swords, and the Three of Pentacles. The person you're attracting has the Three of Wands, Knight of Pentacles, Four of Cups. The energy um, in the advice is the Ten of Wands, the Two of Cups, and the High Priestess. Well, you know, the Two of Cups is an important card when it comes out in a position like the advice. I feel like they're telling you it's worth the effort. It's, if you got if you got something to overcome here, they're giving you very good advice for that. Now you have here Earth, water, fire, and air. You've got all the elements, plus you have the high priestess, so one major arcana. Well, your energy here, I feel like you're ready for the real deal. You're not here to play games. This is not, you know, let me just dabble and date people that I really know are not going to work out. You've got the hero's journey in the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is such a significant card, even though it's a minor arcana. To me, it's similar to, in some ways, to the energy of the fool. Just meaning you're in this earth school and you're here to have experiences that expand you here on this earth but they also ascend your soul and so with the eight of cups eights are about vibration rhythm unity they're about peace and so with the eight of cups you're getting centered you know who you are and so you're not out there desperately seeking somebody just to fill time the eight of cups too you may find that you enjoy your solitude and there might be a little bit of um um, apprehension might be a little strong, but just, I, I feel like you just are going to wait in terms of you won't, again, do anything that might interfere with that solitude, with feeling balanced, with feeling, you know, in terms of career and money too, because there's some solid energy here for that. Like, I feel like you've invested your time in one area, but you've got somebody coming in here that I do feel like they want a commitment with you. So with the Queen of Swords, you've learned from the past. And again, <clears throat> all these major arcana, of course, these are minor, but the major arcana are major life events that help you evolve. And the minor arcana are similar. In the um, Queen of Swords energy, she has she knows pain. She's the widow of the tarot. And so you may have had some losses in relationships, some lessons, some unfortunate lessons that were difficult, that were challenging, that were painful. But the Queen of Swords is absolutely hilarious. So you've got a wit about you, a humor about you. And I do feel like it's very quick. Somebody here, you're very quick witted. And I feel like it attracts people. It makes them laugh around you. It makes them want to be around you. The Queen of Swords is a very confident energy too. You've got a real facility for communication, for using your words. And we have to be a little careful because sometimes that wit, especially mixed with a little bit of sarcasm, and if somebody zings you, you can really zing them hard in that energy. And you'll have the final word there, by the way. Um, but with that, I do feel like we want to have that softening agent of the Eight of Cups that helps with that. So the Three of Pentacles, threes are all about multiplication, growth, stability, and the Three of Pentacles is, is a commitment, okay? And it's also a commitment built on respect, built on solid ground, built on 
you really that reciprocal kind of energy. So I feel like who you're attracting is going to be somebody who's also very grounded, very stable, and they have it in their energy too. But you're it's you get what you are, and you're attracting a match to this. Okay, so I feel like it's it's time for you to attract a real commitment, a real love, and somebody who's mature and has already done the work. You know, it's not about attracting people who say. I'm I'm tr I'm working on myself. I'm willing to. That's great, but let's already hear that they've done some work, and I feel like that's what you're getting here. So they have a, they're an interesting match because they've got a very compatible energy with yours. Again, this is not somebody who's been out on every dating app, you know, going out with anybody who will give them time. This is somebody who's particular. Um, I do feel like they're very successful in their career. They might have a high level of education. I get that. And I do feel like they, when they go in, they go all in. You know, they won't dabble. It's very much like your energy. They're not here just to spend time with somebody because they don't like themselves enough to be single. Okay, I get it from both of you. Like you have enough, um, it's beyond just self, it's like self-acceptance, I guess we could say that. But that self-love, right? And they have it too. And that's where the match comes in. So with the four of cups, fours are about measurement order. They're like the four legs of a table. So I feel like they've had interests in them and they've, you know, they might have dabbled and looked around a little bit, but I just don't think they're into or finding anything they felt like was worth it to get involved in. With the knight of cups, knights are of service. So again, this person I feel like is very stable and balanced, but they're also giving. They've got a generous spirit, a generous heart. And they understand how to be in a relationship. They understand themselves and who they are. Maybe an earth sign here too, by the way, if I didn't say that already. So with the Knight of Pentacles, they're looking for long-term commitment. They have long-term stability and career and money. And then they want to find somebody to share their life with. So with the Three of Wands there, that's a card of waiting. Again, you've got a three and so do they. And I like it that theirs is in your suit, your, your sign. Um, the, you know, the fire energy is, it's like you're already energetically attracting each other. So with the three of wands, I feel like they've been waiting, but knowing they know that you're out there. They can feel your energy. Or if you've already met them, they may have said, I feel like I've known you forever because you are already energetically linked. So down here, I mentioned with the 10 of wands, the struggle is over here. Tens are about a new cycle. And I also feel like if there's any challenges to overcome, it's telling you with the Two of Cups that the relationship is worth it. The Ten of Wands is being able to handle things. And it may be, too, whatever each of you brings to the table, you're both able to understand that that past is the past, right? And that it's really about building a future together. So the Two of Cups is twos are about partnerships. And, of course, the Two of Cups is one about love. It's the one of the greatest cards on the deck to draw in this position, the Two of Cups is a, it's a deep commitment. It's a very um, unconditional type of love. It's a true partnership and it really does bring in joy. It's like joy to your heart and that feeling of actual love, not just the commitment, but the real love is there and wanting to do things for one another. I mentioned before, they have a generous spirit. I can feel it on them. But they love to do things for you. They want to be in a, a place where they can even do the simplest things for you because it comes from a good place. So with the high priestess, uh, um, one of the teachings behind the high priestess is prima materia, meaning that matter comes from the mind. And so it's all the point of attraction coming from your subconscious. The high priestess represents your subconscious. Her crown touches these pomegranates. And it symbolizes bringing heaven to earth. And so with this, it's really about impressing on your subconscious who you want to attract. Speak it out to the universe. Speak out the qualities. Tell your friends, this is what I'm looking for. And be clear about it. So with the high priestess too, she's got the moon in her card symbolizing a new cycle. And the gown that she wears is the beginning of this pool of consciousness or seat of the soul that you'll see in the other major arcana. It's high vibrational energy. And especially with the Two of Cups, you're attracting a relationship that will last. Because when we attract in a high vibrational place, it sustains. It's the low vibrational crap that comes and goes. 
because a lot of times it's force manifested, will manifested. This is coming from a deeper level. It's also getting information. She's the card of the psychic. So trust your intuition. If it's, it's like you get an invitation somewhere and you go, God dang it, I don't really feel like going out. But you have this gnawing feeling. I really, I feel like I just need to go. Do it, okay? It's that kind of energy that draws you into whoever this is. Now, if you've already met him, like I said, you've already, you've had the energetic connection. It's just more indication that you're connected on a deeper level. You've attracted them. So yes, it's in the cards. Um, let's see here <clears throat> what the angels have to say for Aries, please. What else does Aries need to know about love, please? Okay. All right, messages for Aries about love. Okay. So we have here, meditation brings answers, okay? Especially with the high priestess, dream interpretations too are important with that card. So um, they say remain positive. So if you're getting a little bit fed up with who you've been meeting, you know, they're out there. It's like, keep going. Or if you've met somebody, allow it to unfold and develop. They say improving health here. When we get that though, it's mind, body, spirit connection, all working together. Now, when you get a year from now, it doesn't mean you have to wait an entire damn year to meet somebody. It's like the evolution in a year from now, you know, you have this happy couple on an altar. You're going to be blown away. You could be getting married in a year from now because they give you that emphatic, yes, you create your own reality. You can have, do, or be anything Aries. I love you, and I'll be back again soon.